Hi guys, my name's Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Halloween H25. This is supposed to be the movie that was set exactly 25 years after the events of the, of the original movie, as well as being a sequel to Halloween Resurrection. Now, the script that I read, or the information that I read, was from the book Taking Shape 2. It's a sequel to Taking Shape. And there's all sorts of stories and scripts in there that they were talking about that didn't make the, the big screen. And I, I kind of want to dive into some of them, but I've already done a few of them, and I want to talk about more. But today, I want to talk about Halloween H25. Now this script was done by someone called Tim Day. Now his issue was he only had a certain amount of weeks to get this script done because they wanted to bring it out in 2003 of course. There's no point in trying to bring it out any later than that because it wouldn't be H25. Similar to Halloween H2, they need, needed that movie out by 1998 and that's why that movie was slightly rushed at the end with the whole CGI mask etc. So it's similar to this one. After the non-success of 2002, they had a couple of tasks and that was to bring out a movie that should be better than Resurrection but also it has to come out within a year because Resurrection came out in 2002 and they wanted to rush this sequel for 2003. The opening of this script actually begins at the end of Halloween Resurrection so there's a bit of a kind of tail on there but it sort of doesn't finish there and I'll, I'll let you know why. Now you see that in the morgue Michael Myers wakes up in this script and the police come in, everyone starts shooting him and then he apparently dies. But as that's happening, Freddy, as in Freddy Harris from Resurrection, shouts cut, cut, cut. And it turns out that that's a documentary that they're making. Now it does actually happen in real life within the movie because he's reenacting what actually happened. So Michael Myers did get up and the police did kill him, apparently. But in this one, there's a woman called Agent Woods. She's part of the FBI. They're part of this sort of division that's very secret. And what they done was they didn't actually kill Michael Myers. They sedated him and then they placed him under their watch in this sort of confinement area. But they pretended to civilization that Michael Myers is dead, they burned him and they've actually got an urn with someone's ashes in it pretending that it's Michael Myers but it's not because Michael Myers is still alive and he's been tested on in some sort of lab and they want to try and figure out what makes Michael Myers tick. So you can kind of tell now that this is going way off that whole grounded element of the original Halloween and even Halloween H2 and Halloween Resurrection. They kind of want to go off now and do these sorts of lab tests on Michael Myers. The opening does take place in Haddonfield, but after that, it takes place in Chicago. So this script doesn't have Michael Myers in Haddonfield anymore. And I know that some people hated that with Halloween H2, but the same thing happens in this one. He's no longer in Haddonfield. Agent Woods, who's tasked to keep an eye on Michael Myers, is invited to the premiere of Freddy's documentary about the victims of Haddonfield. And Michael Myers does escape eventually and he sees her invitation sitting there. And with that invitation, there's lists of people's names and addresses for some reason. And those names and addresses are from survivors of Michael Myers as well as family members of the victims of Michael Myers. So it's sort of like a grocery list for Michael. He's looking at this thinking, I can go door to door now and kill all these people. Here's where things really get interesting. On this guest list, the people that are invited to this documentary premiere are Sarah from Halloween Resurrection. Now there's a lot of names here, but I'm only going to name a few. Sarah from Halloween Resurrection is invited. John from Halloween H2, Laurie's son, is invited, of course. Uh, you've also got Sheriff Brackett from the original movie. He gets invited as well. Now here's where the, the strange things start to happen. Tommy Doyle is also invited, which is fine. It sounds normal. However, they wanted Paul Rudd's Tommy Doyle from Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, to appear in this film. And you might be going, oh, maybe they're just replacing the names. Uh, sorry, maybe they're just replacing the actors with the actors that previously played them. However, in this script, the scriptwriter wanted all the movies to be put together. So no longer are they going to ignore the likes of Halloween 4, 5 and 6. They wanted to bring them all together. To further confirm this, Sheriff Mika from Halloween 4 and Halloween 5 is also invited to this because of his daughter who died. So you can, it just confirms that everyone and every movie in this franchise has been brought together, or at least the survivors are being brought together for this one script. Now here's the best part of this timeline being brought together. 
Jimmy from Halloween 2 is also invited on this guest list, but we've now got a reveal of Jimmy's last name. Jimmy's last name is Jimmy Lloyd. Yep, Lloyd. This kind of confirms, without confirming it, that Jimmy is the father of Jamie Lloyd. And because of this, because John is slightly younger than Jamie, does that also mean that John's dad is Jimmy as well? They didn't really confirm that, but that's kind of what they were alluding to. The script does get slightly strange now and again, like Agent Woods, when she finds out that Michael Myers has went on a, a killing spree because of her and he escaped because of her, then the FBI disavow her. They pretend that they have no knowledge of her and she's probably the one that's doing the killing. So she's the, she's one of the ones that tries to get followed by the police and gets investigated and even gets arrested as well because they're blaming her for the murders instead of Michael Myers. Michael Myers also looks different in this movie because he's obviously incarcerated. He does still have a mask on, but the reason for that is he's got burns on his face. So the FBI... I've got a white mask, conveniently. They've got a white mask for him that's trying to heal the burns on him. He's also sporting an orange jumpsuit, like an orange prison jumpsuit, instead of the, the classic uh, work overalls that he usually wears. He's also sporting a shock collar, obviously, and he's got an ankle GPS bracelet. However, he doesn't wear all this uniform throughout the entire script because he does find at the documentary premiere, he finds people dressed up as Michael Myers, as in dressed up as him, and he kills one of them and takes their outfit. So he's now donning the original Michael Myers costume. He does also lose the shock collar because he takes the shock collar off and puts it on one of the guards and that's how he escapes this sanitarium. Something that really annoyed me was in this script, Tommy, Tommy Doyle and Sarah from Halloween and Resurrection both die. However, Freddy still survives this movie. He's one of the saviors in this film. Even when he actually kills Michael Myers, he impales Michael Myers with some sort of pole and he says, how's that for closure? I can just imagine Freddy actually saying something like that. Trick or treat. This script also goes super meta, similar to A Nightmare on Elm Street. Not quite like Scream because that's on the nose slightly, but more like A New Nightmare or Wes Craven's New Nightmare from 1994. In this script, we've got this music box, something that helps Michael Myers tick. They use the music box in this prison. But in this music box, when you open it, the sound that comes from it is John Carpenter's Halloween theme. So he, he reacts to the John Carpenter's Halloween theme. This is a music box that's also used to stop Michael Myers at times as well and distract him and that's how he ends up being killed by Freddy. So this music box gets used and it's strange that it's John Carpenter's theme. Something that's even stranger is John Carpenter is actually in this movie as John Carpenter. He's one of the people that goes to the premiere of the documentary and the only reason he's going to this documentary is because he's interested in Michael Myers and he's looking to make a movie about Michael Myers. I will admit though, something about this version of Freddy seems a lot better and more remorseful than the one we got in Resurrection because the documentary that he's making is actually a documentary funded by him and any money that this documentary makes goes towards the victims and the families of the survivors etc of Haddonfield so that's something that's kind of nice that Freddy does to maybe redeem himself from what he'd done or said in Halloween Resurrection. So why wasn't this film made? Well, in actual fact, Dimension liked the script. There's only one thing they wanted to change and that was the documentary that Freddy made. They kind of wanted to scrap that and change it to a book. So instead of having the documentary, they would have the book because they felt like the documentary and the style, I don't know how they saw this, but they felt like it was too similar to Scream 3 back in 2000 from Dimension as well, which was only a couple of years earlier. Screenwriter Tim Day said, yep, that's fine, I'm happy with that. So he went ahead and started changing it, but somehow Dimension still pulled the plug on it. But one thing that's quite interesting is even though they pulled the plug on this script completely, they still kept it open to this day and even offered the script to other people to do some rewrites on. So we might even see some sort of version of this in the future. There's no concrete reason that it was completely scrapped other than probably time restraints as well as 2003 being the birth of Freddy versus Jason and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2003. So I think 
Dimension knew that the sequel to Halloween Resurrection was not going to live up to a remake to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or even Freddy vs. Jason, and it wouldn't look good for the Halloween franchise as a whole, so I'm assuming that's the reason it was ultimately scrapped. Overall, I think for the most part, this script sounds actually quite decent, something different yet original at the same time. One thing I didn't like was the whole Michael Myers being captured and being uh, looked after by the FBI, them doing tests on him. I think that's a little bit too far-fetched. But one thing I really did like about this script was bringing all the characters together, whether they're survivors or family members of the survivors, bringing them all together in this one timeline so that the Halloween franchise doesn't seem so convoluted after the events of Season of the Witch, Halloween 4 and Halloween H2, bringing all the characters together, obviously apart from Season of the Witch, but bringing them all together like Jimmy being... Uh, Jamie's dad, which brings Jamie into the fold, and then you've got Sheriff Mika in there, he's brought into the fold. The only issue we would have with bringing all the timelines together would be what the heck happened to the Thorn Curse. Um, it was good that they left that out, even though they brought all the timelines together. So I think if you're going to bring all the timelines together, this is probably one of the better ways to do it. So what do you think of that script, guys? Do you think it would have been a good sequel to Halloween Resurrection? Do you think it would have been better than Halloween Resurrection? And would you have preferred to see this script take off in 2003 instead of having Rob Zombie's remake four years later in 2007? Because I think if this was successful, we would probably have more sequels in the future and they wouldn't maybe even do a remake for another few years, but the the limit uh, the possibilities were limitless at the time, but they decided to scrap it and go with the remake, of course. But leave your comments down below, let me know your thoughts, and thanks a lot for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. What are you waiting for, huh? I'm coming to get you, Barbara. Everplane, in the pack. Tell me where you are, John! Wolfman's gone. No!